decided to go pick up a 1968 AMC Javelin. Uh, it's been sitting for many years and this might turn into a will it run, I'm not sure. We got the Gus Man coming with us. Uh, but basically a, a viewer of the channel reached out to me, Benjamin, and he asked if I might be able to help him out going to pick this thing up because he's currently stationed over in Syria. Won't be back till mid-December. Active duty army, brother. No nonsense, no how. Thank you very much for your service, Ben. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna go pick this up, and he said we can kind of do whatever we want if we want to mess with the engine or if it rotates. But he pretty much just wants it as a parts car because he's an, an AMC guy to the core, and uh, he said parts are very hard to come by for those and, and, and pricey. So this this car is well worth the price the guy's asking. So that's the quick story. We'll see where it goes. If the engine rotates. Maybe try to do a wheel run, but uh, I'll let you know shortly when we when we roll up. Yeah, bigger jacket for him. It's tough for the, the short hair guys to stay stay warm in the winter. Yeah. All right, well, here is a look at it. 1968 Javelin SST. I was just talking to the owner. He said it's got a small block 400 in it, and it's been sitting for 25 years. And it, it did run when it was parked, uh, but uh, first glance I can see you know, the spark plug wires are off and things are not looking too good. I said it has been parked with the windows open and the, the hood open just like this. He said he, he moved it from one spot to another at one point and the wheels were all locked up too. So we got that. Hopefully the winch is going to be strong enough. But yeah, I guess we'll, we'll just do a quick walk around tour on it. Um, hopefully the lighting is still okay. Got a little bit of daylight. You know, rotten out pretty much everywhere. This, this body's definitely uh, toasted. Oof, probably uh, make sure that doesn't blow out going down the highway. Uh, as you can see, this is a pretty rough parts car even at that. And there's no title for it either. Well, I love how the dash is pushed back a bunch. It's, it's really, really spacious in here. It's got uh, 23,000 on the clock. So probably 123. These gauges, I bet you these are worth great money alone. It's got a Pioneer head unit in it and unfortunately head unit a B&M shifter unfortunately automatic transmission uh, but okay seats you know I mean the seat frames are good probably right I don't know guys I should probably just <laughs> all right so uh, one thing I like about the winter less likely to run into critters in here but I'm sure any mice and snake everything else have uh, taken home taken shelter over the years this has got the weather eye <laughs> weather eye Woo! let's uh let's just keep going around here and so if you guys are interested in parts i'm sure uh ben would would probably be happy to sell some of the stuff that he doesn't use or need looks like that wheel was rotating find out I originally came with a 290 I don't know if you guys can read that on this camera and uh, there's a glance at the back the old tank is uh, coming out of it so hopefully it's empty oh with some, some goodies big old hi-hats out of the warehouse or something all those right block of concrete uh, but i mean it's there's the original color you can see blue and i'll try to look up a 68 gavel in blue if we can see what it might have looked like american motors amc was the last independent auto manufacturer and uh you know definitely not as many of these were sold and made as, as chevys and chrysler's at least I would guess that because I don't ever see them. Oh, I can't open that. The rear window still goes down. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. Kind of. It actually rolls back, it looks like. Anyway, all right, well, let's uh, get this on the trailer and then we'll find out if the engine rotates when we get home. Water pump's free and we'll, we'll worry about that later. I mean, that's a good sign. That stuff spins. And inside, I. Don't see any major rust in there. I mean, heck, this could be a runner. 
everything is intact. Just gotta hook the wires up and maybe spit shine the carburetor and, uh, and fire it up. Obviously, I won't waste too much time on this since we're just kind of picking it up, but it could turn into a, uh, a fun video if we got it driving. I don't know. Anyway, I'll lube these. Oh, you see somebody already tried pushing this down without lubing that, and it, that creased it right here a little bit. across the front of that. Did a review on this open road winch a few months ago. You can see sitting out in the sun, the cover is kind of getting crummy. It probably won't last more than six months a year, but it did keep it nice under here anyway. This thing's really sitting down on the ground. See it's got long tube headers though. I rusted through. I think we'll have to double line pull it. You see from the heat under the cover, these stickers are pulling off. And I don't know if this AC Delco is any good. It should be, but we'll find out. Go, it's no problem. Yeah, I can't hear the wind struggling though. So we're gonna use the snatch block. A lot less strain on the, the winch. the three are spinning. All right, all chained down, ready to hit the road, put a strap over that hood, and uh, took the window out, and just kind of going over a few other things like this. Yeah, I don't want that flying off and hitting somebody, so. We sweep the dirt off, you know, I get the trunk hits fine, it doesn't have to get tied down. Quite a bit of bondo on this car. Over the years, it's definitely had some patchwork. I did notice the front clip galvanized under the paint though. Look how well that held up. Old school galvanizing, that not so much. And underneath it looks like there was a groundhog. It's not gonna be too happy that uh, this is gone now. Okay, so he was digging all this dirt up and pushing it up against the frame. Terrible, it's uh, same thing with the exhaust up there. He kind of shoved all that dirt up on it. And when we were dragging it up, this got ripped off on the bottom. Anybody recognize this brand? I don't, but some kind of tuner, high performance muffler, I don't know. I'm surprised that sticker held up as well as it did, especially being on an exhaust. back home. I was just looking these up online. I believe this is a 1970 because it's got the rectangular or, or square turn signals on the front versus round ones. Uh, so it doesn't look like anything major blew off on the drive except for a lot of stuff came out of the trunk. Jeez, uh, probably should have done a better job with that. It's not good to go down the highway. Yeah, the whole 
Don't floor bust it out. I mean, I guess I could have assumed. Um, well, yeah, hopefully uh, there wasn't much traffic on the road, right? Let's get the air shocks back. I'm sure those still work good. I guess let's, uh, let's tear in, try and start her up. I think we'll go ahead and just pull these plugs out, get some lube in there. See we're missing the oil dipstick tube. Ah, the master cylinder's gone. The coil is just kind of flopping in the wind back here. Actually, it's in the bracket. And this has got a Holly 4 barrel that, you know, <laughs> is probably terrible inside. But uh, linkage just seized up. Choke moves on it, though. Suspension's kind of interesting on the front. It's got these high spring towers with holes cutting them almost. Maybe somebody came in here and like reinforced it in there. And there's a look at it from underneath. It's almost like a coil over or something, but without a shock. Because the shocks are mounted in the traditional spot down low. There's another look at it from, from behind. Definitely a little different looking. Let's see if we can get an idea on the oil level with this old antenna. Yeah, there it goes. You can hear it hitting the bottom of the oil pan. <laughs> I poke a hole for the oil pan with this thing. Oh yeah, it's got half inch of oil in it. So we might as well drain out that. It's got the nice set of old school craggers. These are the, the Unilug ones. Actually, I kind of hate these. The, the Fury has a set of these and they're just, they're a, a pita to, to put on and take off. No water, just some slugs. Although it is like 20 something degrees out right now, so it makes sense why it's so thick. Yummy. If we do get this thing started up, that's gonna sound pretty cool. You can tell by looking at the ring gear, flex plate, it hasn't been turned over in quite some time. A little rusty. Uh, and then the starter bolt, one of them is backed out, but uh, yeah, so that might need some attention. You know, the control arms in the frame up here, it's all pretty good shape, actually. I suppose it wouldn't be the worst idea to get a filter for this thing, too. Yeah, there's the carpet. We're gonna skip pulling the plugs for now. I'm just shooting the lube down the throat, and I'll go ahead and crank her over. Oh, moment of truth. Yeah, she ain't locked up. And she stopped. Okay. Let's try reversing that. All right, I'm hearing some weird noises, but it spun all the way around. So let's go back this way and then we'll throw some oil in it. So when I reversed it, I did feel that tight spot again, but it might maybe a little rust spot in the cylinder because it blew past it. And this one of the full 720 and then some going the opposite direction. Uh, and it, it spins good. I hear a little compression in there too. So I think she's worthy of putting a little oil into it, uh, which by the way, thank you. Big shout out to one of the subscribers. Hooked me up with a bunch of fluids. Got yeah, trans fluid oil, a bunch of just old old stuff he was kind of getting rid of. And he, he gave me a couple, a few other things too. We'll put this stuff to good use. Actually, this one almost looks like used motor oil super tech, but it's, uh, it's not opened. Yeah. Oh, never mind, it's not dark. Just look that way on the side. Yeah, four more quarts. We'll go with one quart of ATF plus four. It ain't gonna hurt nothing, right? I mean, really, I could have just put some used oil on this too, but uh, you know, that's all in my waste oil heater right now. But uh, I usually do save used motor oil for, for engines like this. Again, it doesn't make sense to put some mobile clean 5000 in it but then again these old quartz you know these are so old that uh, you got to worry about these cracking as they get older as well uh, so it's good to use it a fram ph30 quick break for dinner look at these burgers jen made oh my but wait a second there's a little guy here for you guys Look at this cute little mini doggy burger. Okay, Daddy's gonna feed you the burger. All right. Yes. 
Nothing but the best, best for this little dachshund. Oh, is that good? He swallowed the whole thing, but I didn't hold it. <laughs> then I ended up choking on this. All right, buddy. Okay, act like we don't want to feed you ever. <laughs> well, the only brand they have in stock for the PH30 is a Fram. So we go with Fram. And then there's the ongoing debate about pre-filling or not pre-filling oil filters. Uh, I recently saw a video by, I think, Ford Bossman. He was saying that you can actually do harm by filling it because of the cavitation or something. I don't buy that at all. I say if the filter is upside down and it... You know, is it in a position where it makes sense to, and you have the time, and you care about the engine, then then heck yeah, pre-fill the filter. Like especially when you're you're going to be cranking over an engine that's been sitting for as long as as this one is. I mean, really a good idea to prime the oil system too if you care about the engine. But of course, if you don't pre-fill it, it's going to take that much longer to get oil pressure. And then I've also seen the argument saying that you risk getting dirt inside the post filter section inside of the filter, which you know, as long as you're not pouring used dirty oil in there, you should be all right. Ended up pulling the plugs out. It's got uh, auto lights, a couple motor crafts in there too, and uh, no rust on the tips. That's looking nice. I'll shoot some PB blast into the cylinders. Might as well, right? Feeling hopeful on this one. And I suppose I'll clean the rust off these tips too, as they're all crudded. I know, I know, just throw a set of plugs in there, but hey, she ain't worthy of it yet, guys. Lux has got an oil change. I just ran all eight through this little spark tester too, and see those work real good. Well, now we're going to try and crank her over with the plugs out. We went to go secure that starter bolt or take it out and put washers, but, you know, it's seized in place. The headers are in the way, so uh, we'll just pretend we didn't see that. Got the JF Egg Weld, 3000 amp. This red wire is going down to the starter, and you know, our starter solenoid's <laughs> pretty rough shape. So we'll just clamp these guys together right here and then work the ground to hopefully crank it. Didn't check the trans fluid yet, the stick's missing, but we can always deal with that later uh, if we actually get this thing cranking and starting. Let's go, moment of truth. Oh. Okay. Right, we got some starter click in action. It's good to hear. Oh. Drawing a good amount of amperage though. Yeah, so it uh, needs a starter. I've got something to try. So this is the Goodall Stardall by Van Air. They actually sent this to me a little while ago and I've been kind of waiting for a big heavy diesel engine to try this on because these are really meant for like tractor trailers and such. But let's give it a go because I was just beating on the starter. I, I hear it clicking and wanting to try. I think we just need some more juice. I've never used this. Look at these things. Super heavy duty cables. Nice long cables actually too. Real thick. It, does, it has a crossover cable in here too, a nice thick one. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with these actually. This seems like really good quality. This is fully charged. Oh, there's 10,000 amps. Now it's just, the starter's just not uh, making continuity contact in there is what's happening. Now this just threw an E2 code. Let's see what that means. Timed out. Okay. All right, that's fine. All right, I now have the solenoid bypass at the other end of this on the main lug heading into the starter. So sometimes the, the contacts in those get uh, corroded up. Let's see if that helps out. Yep, all right, there we go. We got some crankage. And I did spray some lube on that flywheel too down there. Beautiful, we'll let the oil pump prime up and then put the plugs in. Ooh, I got a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, it's speedy blast. It's head sprayed in there. All right, this timed out again. So with these jump packs, totally normal that I'm, they all have a timeout feature. Actually, except for the JF Egwo, that one does not time out. It goes, it, it'll just die on you, which, which is kind of nice because you can use it as a uh, like a battery to get you home in a gym. You know, with, with the start all or this, this Gulu, you, you can't do that because these all time out after like you know the Gulus. I think 20 seconds or so in this thing. I'm, I'm not sure how long it's been, but and with all the plugs back in, let's listen for even compression on a crank over. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. See our ground's getting a little smoky there, but uh, yeah, at this point. We just gotta get some spark hooked up. However, I think I'm gonna call it night because it's 
a little chilly out and it's getting kind of late. And just so you guys don't think I'm a total weenie, I mean, it's 23, would it feel like a 17 Fahrenheit? And uh, it's supposed to warm up a scotch tomorrow, I think. So we'll we'll mess with this then. That I don't think my neighbor's gonna appreciate an open header V8 starting up late night. You know, I try to be respectful of the neighbors and uh, have great relationships with them. Try to keep it that way, you know. Just fired up the old clean burn CB2000. Get the garage toasty, but uh, I can tell this thing is way overdue to be clean because it's been burning for a few minutes and our stack temperature is super low. And uh, I was just messing with it. So, you know, this burns used used uh, waste oil, really anything, veggie oil, motor oil, whatever. But I got my oil pressure cranked way up, I'm running 20 PSI air pressure, and I'm just, you know, not getting a great flame out of it. So, these waste oil, like, that flame looks okay, but not for how high I have the oil pressure turned up. Uh, and, and these things are great, but they just, they're constant maintenance. You gotta clean them all the time. I just gotta do a little spit shine on the nozzle. Problem is, uh, you know, this thing heats the oil up and it, and so carbon like this breaks off in the lines and clogs up the nozzle. And then, uh, you know, take these nozzles apart and clean them out. You don't have to replace them like you would a normal, normal uh, oil heater nozzle. The sun is out, so I think instead of jumping on this, I'm gonna take the airboat out for a little spin and then we'll we'll get that fired up later. mostly came out just to investigate this area. There's a property right behind it I'm trying to buy and it backs up to these woods and then to the Delaware River and this lagoon. Uh, and it's, it's really a beautiful, incredible area back here. I mean, it's a, about a seven foot tide swing here, thereabout. And I mean, I'll try and get a drone shot and then a drone shot when it's low tide too, so you can see the difference. But uh, it's just spectacular back here. So, like super industrial area over this way and probably polluted groundwater and such, but it's, uh, it's quite scenic and it's got this little, little island out in the middle. Um, so yeah, just figured take the airboat out for a good little spin. And I don't know if you guys enjoy these kind of detours, you know, let me know down in the comments if, if you think I should probably leave this kind of stuff out of the video. I know it has nothing to do with uh, the car we're working on, but sometimes it's nice to just take a little detour from that. And you know, if you enjoy it, great. And if not, let me know. Always appreciate the feedback guys. Hey, let's fire this javelin up as I call it. I think it's actually pronounced javelin. Sure, some people call it Havlin too. I'm guessing this has points ignition under here. Let's pop the dizzy cap off though. See what it's looking like. Yeah, we got points. Uh, pretty clean. Heck, maybe we even have spark. I guess I could just check first. I made a silly mistake last night. Let's see if anybody picked up on this. When I was sending power down to the starter and I the solenoid wasn't working and so I ended up running this jumper down there. Well, I didn't have this solenoid here bypassed on the wall. So I, I just did that now. This one was connected on this side. And so when you turn the key, this gets power and power gets sent down to the starter solenoid because this is what transfers that battery cable power down there. But I don't know, I, I just bypassed this right now. So let's see uh, with this one disconnected if it turns over. Let's. Now, still not getting a crank over. So it is a bad solenoid. Let's just double check that. Uh, so this, this here cable bypasses the solenoid on the starter. I'll hook this up. Yeah, ooh, that's weak though. I'm just curious what the Gulu does on this. And of course, using this longer length of four gauge cable to power the starter is gonna make it uh, crank weaker. 
decent, but not that great. Let's go with the big boy and see what the, the difference is with the 10,000 amp. Oh yeah, <laughs> dramatically better. So this, I can't wait to try this on some bigger engines. All right, now we get the shortest path possible. I have this one cable leading to the starter bung and let's hear how it cranks over now. Oh yeah. Cranking much nicer. And I see a touch of movement on the points, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean the points now and uh, see if we get some spark out of it. A quick way to test the points is take the black wire coming off of it, hook a test light up, and then the other side to positive. Crank it over and you're looking for a pulsing light indicating like a, a pulsing ground. So let's see what we got. I got nothing. You should see it basically lighting up or blinking real fast like that. And if it's not, then you ain't gonna get spark because you gotta break the field on the coil. You got a spark induced on the secondary side of the coil. I got the points cleaned up and you see I have a good ground on here now. If I rotate this, there we go. So I got the gap set pretty much where it needs to be roughly. Good enough to start it anyway. And I guess we'll do a quick crank to show you that pulsing ground I was talking about. See it? There you go. All right, so we should have spark as long as the coil's good now. Well, since we have no idea how these wires go on the distributor and nothing's marked, they roll off, uh, next step I did was go ahead and take the number one spark plug out, cover my finger over it, hand crank the engine until I felt compression, and then bring this to top dead center, well, about 10 degrees before. And you see our distributor is pointing right here. So when I drop the cap on, this spark plug wire will go to cylinder number one, and then eight, four, three, six, five seven two and normally uh, the distributor when these are dropped in properly this should be facing kind of like toward the front or toward cylinder number one but you can see in this case it, it's not so i would have been just guessing trying to figure out the firing order well we got our about as rigged as it gets and i'm gonna check for spark now it should have wires all in the right spot i'm gonna take it off here and just check uh right on this little ground Oh yeah, great spark. She's gonna fire right off as long as I got that firing order correct. I got a rich mixture of some two-stroke gasoline. Let's pour a little down the throat and not worry about hooking up gas to the carb yet. We'll just see if she wants to fire up. Oh, maybe I don't have the firing order right. Turns out I was off by 180 degrees, so I thought I felt compression and I was hand cranking that with, with one hand holding my finger over the other, but we were at the top of the exhaust stroke or overlap uh, when the intake valves, exhaust and intake are open at the same time. And uh, yeah, now I swapped those wires around, so let's see if it fires. Definitely too much gas in here, so even if it starts, it's gonna be terrible. And the Bendex will, will stick on too. We'll have to be quick to take this wire off. Lots of things to consider. What a mess. Should really have just a starter button for this, but all right. Tap that. Yeah. At this point, we know the engine is a runner. Actually sounded pretty decent, uh, although I think the timing was too advanced. I, I had the points gap open too big on there, so I went and made another adjustment, set that. And then I was messing around with the carburetor, have had the linkage soaking, but it's just seized up solid. So I'm gonna pop that off. We'll see what the inside looks like. And you know, I'm not sure if it's really worth it to go any further. I mean, cause even if we get it running longer on fuel, you know, we got the whole cooling system that's not hooked up and, well, lots of other stuff. I don't want to risk starting it anymore either with that. I guess we'll pull that starter motor out and see what's going on with that too. Got the single plane manifold. Take a quick look inside of this. Uh, you know, normally I like to just put fuel to a carb because well, once you, you tear all the gaskets and stuff, it's like if you're going to take it apart, you better be ready to do it right. Um, and usually they're, they're pretty much fine. I wonder if this is a much older one uh, because it's got the, the flat heads instead of the seven mil or eight mil, whatever these usually have, but the, the hex, yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, pretty sludged up. I'll try to get you a closer look. 
The floats ain't stuck though. I could be mistaken, but this must be an older unit since it has the brass floats. Don't really see those anymore. They have those like foam composites. Uh, I don't know if you guys just heard that. The pumper diaphragm pressed it and it just like made a bunch of crunching noises. <laughs> Here's a look inside the primary side. The main jets are not plugged up completely. The power valve don't move at all. And then the secondary side, you can see these jets are completely plugged. So those never would have sucked any fuel. Yeah, I'm poking that, poking it. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, see that starter bolt is bent. Somebody ran her in there. This, huh? So like I was saying before, the starter motor probably just needs a new solenoid, which can be bolted off right here. And most of you guys probably already noticed, but I'll just show you. Uh, so normally this thick gauge, four gauge wire gets connected to this post and it's not connected to the motor. Now, right now it's directly connected to the motor. So if I apply voltage to it, it's, you know, it's gonna spin over. And, and that's, so that's the bypassing I did. Because this solenoid does two things. It flings out the, the Bendix drive to grab the, the flex plate, and then it connects these two big lugs together inside. And that's what's wrong with this one. Because you see, if I fly it out right now, let's, let's listen, uh, take that off the table. You see, it's working, like, like you would think that's good, but listen to how slow the motor it's flying out and it's spinning the motor but listen to that speed and then i'm gonna i'm gonna hook it up to this as we're doing that now i get hooked up to here and you, you heard the, the speed difference because this can flow a lot more current right these so let's take it off and see what it looks like probably just some corrosion inside This part of it is working fine, but um, behind here, it's not connecting these two. Let's take this off. Yeah, there you go. So corrosion on the, so when this plate flies out, this connects these two together. So if I, you know, if I just sanded that and cleaned it up, you could probably make it work fine again, but that, that you would just replace that cheap enough to get one at the parts store, I'm sure. Well, I think at this point we can close out the first assessment video. It's kind of like, where do we go from here? Uh, you know, if I had a, a spare starter kicking around and maybe a, a carburetor that you just bolt on instead of rebuilding the other, I would certainly do so, but it's not my vehicle. I'm kind of just holding it for him till he gets, uh, hopefully has a safe return back to the States from Syria. And originally I was actually gonna just drop this off over at my, my buddy's house to, to store it for him. But with it not rolling freely, that seems like more of a hassle to get off the trailer. There's no equipment over there. So I'll just leave it on here for now and hopefully he'll be back mid-December. And if we don't do another full video on this, there will certainly be an update to it at the end of another video. I always, always, always uh, will, will update these these kinds of videos so they don't just i don't leave loose ends you know some of them might take forever like the the jeep over there getting all ready for part three uh but you know we'll, we'll get to it my personal opinion would be this one's probably not worth saving but what do you guys think after seeing everything you've seen in this video is this old javelin worth saving or not uh i'm gonna say it probably needs a little too much but i must stress this is still a very big success story for this car because the guy who was selling it was ready to take it to the scrap yard since he had it posted for 500 bucks which is basically scrap value and at that rate it, he was trying to clear room it's like you might as well just drag it down to the the junkyard uh, he didn't have a title for it either so it's like it's tough but the guy who's buying it is a, a nut for these loves them has a few i'll maybe try to plug a couple clips of his at the end of this video as well and um yeah so that's a that's a a good story she's off to a good home even if it's just pieces of her thank you so much for watching guys appreciate every one of you and uh, merch coming in the future bear with me i'm really terrible at this kind of thing but this is a a sample of the design that you guys voted up in the uh, poll section on the creator post so thanks very much for your feedback on that and yeah we'll just end it off with some random clips maybe get a couple clips of his cars too and see you guys in a future video thanks so much no nonsense no how This is 
is a quick reminder to always have the title switched over when you sell a vehicle because well one of the viewers of the channels reached out to me said hey you don't live near this address do you hey i got a letter from the police said there's an abandoned vehicle and i sold it two years ago to some kid and i guess he never switched the title well this is now parked on the street just like that so that's uh that's why you always gotta swap the title over because otherwise you might end up with a letter from the police it's a shame because still got good wheels on this firebird but this thing is beyond rusted i was thinking about maybe towing it home and scrapping it but whew, that's pretty bad <laughs> Would you quit your yapping? Yeah. <laughs> Go get him. Good way to end the day. Cooking some hot dogs down by the river. Actually, smoked brats. Down by the river. This is going to be our new backyard if we buy that, that piece of property.